Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, I've got some great emulation news for you. We're talking about the Nintendo Switch on PC and on Android, as well as LaunchBox. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about Nintendo Switch emulation on PC with Ryu Jinx. Ryu Jinx just released their progress report for April, and there are a bunch of improvements in it. Now, this progress report is extremely well written. We're going over these changes at a high level, but if you want to see them in detail, I will leave a link to it in the description below. I recommend checking it out. The first thing in the report is an update on their Patreon goals. The Vulcan GPU backend is still in progress, but they do have a test build ready to go, and you can check it out. As for ARB shaders, they are also in progress, but they will hopefully be making it to the mainline version sooner rather than later. And ARB shaders will help reduce stuttering when you play through a game for the first time. And as for their Patreon, they're currently sitting at $1,846 per month, which is really close to their first goal here of $2,000 per month. Once they hit $2,000, they'll add texture packs and replacement capabilities. And at $2,500 a month, they'll add a full-time developer. At $5,000 a month, we get two full-time developers. Between March and April, Ryu Jinx did add in a bunch of GPU improvements. Here is Rune Factory 5 before, and here is after. It's still looking a little bit messed up, but a heck of a lot better. And if we scroll down the page just a little bit, here is Project Diva before, and we've got a laser light show going on. Here is after, where it's been cleaned up significantly. With Kirby and the Forgotten Land, if you take a look at this text box, it's overlapping one of these options, and it's got a very interesting shape. And this is before. Here is after. Things have been cleaned up significantly. LEGO Star Wars also got cleaned up. This is before, and if you take a look specifically at the lighting, here is after, it's almost as if HDR has been applied. And they've also implemented a brand new shader cache which will really help out a bunch of different games. Here is Yokai Watch up and running and this is the before. As the character moves around the screen we can see some flickering and some minor color distortions. Here is the after, no flickering, no color distortions, everything looks really good. And here's the initial list of games that are improved by it, Shin Megami Tensei, Mario Party Superstars, The Witcher 3, Pokemon, Lego Star Wars, and there's going to be many, many more in the future. As for the CPU portion of the emulator, things did get a little bit better, and Amiibo emulation also improved. Ryu Jinx's audio renderer received two updates this month with more improvements on the way. Controls for Ryu Jinx also received some improvements. For motion controls before, if you weren't using CMU Hook, they were reversed. If you tilted right, it would go left. If you tilted left, it would go right. And now that has been fixed simply by flipping it. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, things also got better. Here is Skyward Sword before, here is after. Here is what Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl looks like using Vulcan. And here is Bastion. This is before and this is after. There's just a bit of a difference here. The Ryu Jinx team is working very hard behind the scenes to polish up the overall Switch emulation experience. There have been a ton of improvements between March and April, and there are still more improvements along the way. If you haven't checked out Ryu Jinx, I definitely recommend trying it out. It's a great emulator. And speaking about great emulators, next up here we're talking about Nintendo Switch emulation on Android with Skyline. And yes, yet again, we've got some improvements. LEGO Worlds is booting. Ninja Gaiden is booting. Devil May Cry 3 gets in game, and the graphics are looking good. Darksiders 2 gets into the menus. Sonic Colors is booting. If you're a fan of visual novels, there are a few of them that are now playable. An arcade racer that I absolutely love, Horizon Chase Turbo, is now booting. Devil May Cry 2, Capcom Beat 'em Up Bundle, and Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle are now in game. I think it's pretty safe to say that the Skyline developers are not taking any time off. It's pedal to the metal full steam ahead. And as far as I know, things are going to get even better in the future. Last up here, we're talking about LaunchBox and emulation front end. If you don't know what LaunchBox is, I've done a number of videos on it in this channel. Feel free to check out one or two or three or four. Or the more the merrier. Just check out a bunch of them. Have some fun. LaunchBox is an amazing emulation front end. I do highly recommend it. It does a great job at organizing your ROM collection, making everything look nice and beautiful. LaunchBox is listening to the community, and right now there's a poll out to 
help shape the future of LaunchBox. So if you want to vote in the poll or if you just want to check it out, you will have to be a member of the LaunchBox forums. I'll drop a link in the description below. Once you're here, you should have full access to the poll. One question I found extremely interesting was number 9, Mr. FPGA Remote Game Launching. If this feature were to win, LaunchBox would be able to remotely launch a game on your Mr. FPGA device over your home network. That is really, really cool. But so are some of the other features up for voting, so feel free to check this post out. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts about anything we talked about today in the comments below, whether it was Ryu Jing, Skyline, or even LaunchBox. Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state.